Working model is a program that is used for dynamics analysis of linkages, mechanisms, and machines. And sometimes it's used in classes like kinematics of machines or dynamics of machines to help analyze the dynamic behavior of these four ball linkages or more than four ball linkages as well. Uh, but usually in kinematics courses, we deal with four ball linkages. So what we're gonna do today is go over a few, an example of a crank slider four ball linkage as you can see in this picture, and see how we can use working model, the 2D version of working model, to uh, analyze the dynamic behavior of a crank slider four bar linkage. A crank slider four bar linkage is a mechanism that uses the rotation or 300 degree r rotational uh, motion of the crank, which is the blue link in here, L2, and uses the coupler, the green uh, linkage, to transfer that rotational motion to the reciprocal motion of a slider in this picture, which is the orange or yellow uh, link going back and forth. And an example of this is uh, the electric saws that is used to cut tree branches or big trees in, in the forests. Uh, a mechanism like this could be used there to transfer the rotational motion of a motor into the reciprocal motion of the saw teeth. So some dimensions are given to us. Uh, the length of the crank is 4 inches, L2. The length of the crank is 12, uh, the, the coupler is 12 inches. The offset from this, the pin uh, that connects the, uh, the crank to the ground is, uh, I, actually, the, 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 what I was talking about, the offset is the distance between the, this pin and the slider is minus 2 inches. And we say minus 2 because we assume that the global coordinate system is attached to this pin, the pin that connects the crank to the ground, and the y direction, the positive y direction is upward. So negative would be downward. And because this slider is located be below this pin, we have a minus 2 inches for the distance, so the offset between this pin and this slider. And the initial position for the crank is given 60 degrees. Uh, which is calculated from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. And using this information, we can calculate the initial position of this slider with respect to the pin, this pin uh, that, can, that, that connects the, uh, the crank to the ground uh, in the horizontal direction. So this is the initial distance. This one will change depending on the positions of this uh, slider. And the initial angle for the coupler with respect to the positive x-axis in this picture. So we have these given values and these calculated uh, values for the dimensions of this uh, linkage. And these are the position analysis of a four bar crank slider linkage. With this information, let's go to work and model and try to model this and analyze its kinematic behavior. So in work and model, uh, a few things that I have to do first is uh, come here in the numbers and units from uh, view, numbers and units, change the units as necessary. So by clicking that button, the more choices, I can come to more information. I have changed my unit systems from English, uh, from SI to English pounds. I can see that the distance is in inches, which is what I want. And also the rotations are in degrees, which is what I want initially. And time is in seconds. In this case, I don't care about the, uh, the gravity or weight. So um, this pound doesn't really matter. And in order to make sure that gravity does not affect my simulation, I can come to world gravity and then change uh, the type of gravity to none. I can say vertical, I can say planetary, or I can say none. And this is what I want to do because I don't want gravity to affect the kinematic behavior of my linkage. One more thing that I, I have to do in my working model, and that's because an update to Windows broke uh, kind of like how working model works on my computer uh, because it freezes when I click uh, run. So in order to solve that problem, uh, I, have, I have to come to here under world to pause control and then add this um, line to pause when. This is a line that you can copy in your working model if you have the same problem that I have. And that is uh, what this line does is pauses the simulation after every, in this case, 10 seconds. You can change that number to 5, 1, 30, or whatever seconds you want to pause the uh, simulation. And then that way, it helps prevent freezing of a working model 
as you run the simulation. And again, this is a problem that's caused by an update to Windows and uh, this working model 2D is a very old program. It hasn't been updated for years and that's why this problem exists. So with that, let's uh, relook at what we had. I have a four inch crank that I want to model. So let's actually do that first. I want to create this and uh, so uh, by creating, by clicking on this rectangle and creating a, uh, drawing a rectangle here, I just have one linkage. By right clicking on this rectangle and click geometry, I can see its dimensions. Uh, its height doesn't really matter in, in kinematics because we're not really worried about the mass or the weight of this thing. But I'm going to change it to 0.25. And then for the width, which is more important, I'm going to change it to 4, which is the length of the, uh, the crank. And I can move it around as I wish. So if I go back here and the uh, in the model, I know that this ladder is 12, uh, 2 inches beneath the left corner of my uh, crank, which is where the crank is pinned to the ground by this pin. So going back to working model, I'm going to create a temporary link 2 inches and that is not a good one and unfortunately working model does not have an undo feature so if you make a mistake you have to delete and sometimes you have to come back to what you did so i'm going to create a rectangle in this case and uh, what i want is that the center of this rectangle in the horizontal direction be at the left corner like basically let me zoom in so you can see what i'm talking about I want the center of this rectangle be right here and then the height of it be four inches but it's hard to snap things in in between stuff and work in model so one thing i can I, I do is to pen two ends of my link like that temporarily this link as i said is going to be temporary anyway and then change the width from 0.25 to 0.5 and now the center of that is right here. The other thing I want to do is to make sure that the height of this is two inches. Right now it's 2.35, which is 0.35 inches longer than, I, than it should. So I can delete this link or this joint and create another joint right here. So now it's blocked in, in its elongation in the upward direction. So if I change its height to two, you see that the length changed only in the vertical in the bottom side of this link. Again, this is a temporary link. This is not a, a thing that I want to keep there. This is just a way for, to help me see where I'm putting the slider. Then if I go back to my picture, I see that D is 12.684 inches in the positive X direction. So if I create another temporary link in here again the first thing i want to do is make sure that the center of this link temporary link is at the center line of this horizontal line so to do that i i pin this end and i pin this end and then change the height of this from 0.25 to 0.5 so right now i know that the center line is right there now i'm gonna delete this joint and pin this end. So if I change the length of this or the width of this link from 7.2 to 12.684, it's going to expand in the positive x direction. So 12 point, is it 684 or 864? It's 684. 12 point 684. And right now this is so big that it expands the or goes beyond my window I can just zoom it like that and this is where I have it so this is a this is a permanent link this is my crank I want to keep it these two are temporary and I'm I'm using this link I, I use these two temporary links to locate that the center of this slider is going to be right here at the center of this vertical line so to do that I'm going to create another rectangle 
just like that. And uh, again, the center of this slider should be right there, but right now it is not there. And I put it like that because I want to make sure that this slider is uh, working properly. So I want to, again, use the same technique, pin this end and pin this end of this slider, and then change the width from 1.6 uh, something to, let's make it 1, or actually 0.75. And then I want to delete these two temporary pins and pin here and then pin here. And I change the width of this one from 0.75 to 1.5, which is two times that. But this trick, now I have made sure that the center of this slider, which is this one, which is going to be a permanent link, is exactly at the at two inches below this pin and 12.684 inches in the horizontal direction. Now I can remove my temporary links as, as well as their joints, as well as this one. And temporarily, I want to ground my slider because I don't want it to move anywhere from its, uh, or, or tr rotate or move anywhere as I make the coupler in my uh, in my model. So the coupler is also 12 inches long, which is going to be very long, and it's at 152.91 degrees from the horizontal direction. So the coupler, again, let's go back, the, the angle for the coupler is measured from this point. That means the, the origin or the beginning of the uh, the link I want to create for the coupler should be right in here. So let me move this a little bit to the right or left and create the coupler right there. And now I want to first, because I need to change the length of this one, I'm going to pin these two ends. So it expands to the right and then change its um, length to 12, point 12 inches. Then I can delete these two links and pin this end of the, uh, the coupler. Now, because I put the coupler right under the on the slider and pinned the coupler on the slider, the coupler is linked to the slider. And if I move move the coupler around, uh, if if I try to ro rotate the coupler, it will rotate about this um, point with this pin. And then if I unground the slider, it will move with that as well. But right now we still haven't connected the coupler to the um, uh, to the crank. We have to do that next. So I know that the angle for the coupler is 152.91 degrees. So let's go here, right click on the coupler go to properties and change the angle from 0 to 152.91 and that is exactly uh, where it must be. The next thing I have to do is to change the angle for the the crank. And you make, in order to make sure that it rotates about the right point, I need to pin here in the crank. And the crank originally is at 60 degrees. So if I come here to the properties of the crank and say 60, I see that the center lines are actually, in this case, matching as well. So I can try to pin them right there. Now I can unground the slider and I can have the crank attached to the coupler, attached to the slider by means of these pins. 
Now the next thing I have to do is to make sure that this slider moves in the horizontal direction only. So uh, to do that, I have to create slight joint and the horizontal one, not the vertical one. So if I click on this one and click on this corner of this slider and I have to do another one on this end and I can make sure this makes sure that the uh, the slider moves in the horizontal direction and everything is connected. One thing else we can do just to make sure make this one look a bit a little bit more pretty is to right click and do appearance and change the colors to other colors. I can make this one green and I can make the slider let's say orange. I can play with the colors as I wish. And the other things that we can do is to change the names. I can change the name, name of this one to crank. Change the name of this one to coupler. And change the name of the orange rectangle to slider. And I can play with the rest of this stuff in here as well. So at this point, in order to make sure I don't lose my work, it's good to save uh, my work. Click on Save. I go to Documents, the folder that I created. It's called it Crank Slider Linkage. So I'm going to save it so I don't want to lose my work. The next thing I want to do is to give some uh, motion to this linkage because if I click run at this point nothing is going to happen because there is no velocity or force applied to this system. So I'm going to remove this pen and replace it by motor, this icon right here, and place it right there. And save again. And if I right click on the motor and click on properties, now I see that I can change uh, I can set it to type of torque, rotation, velocity, acceleration, or, or a DC motor. So let's create a velocity and let's say that it rotates at about like 15 degrees per second. Let's make it uh, not, not so fast and close this one. Save this. Let me zoom out a little bit because it's going to rotate a little bit. I guess I zoomed out too far. Or Okay, let's go here and, and try to, okay, can I zoom? Okay, this is good. I want to make sure that the entire motion of this thing is visible. So let's run this. And again, like I put that code in my uh, view, actually world pause control, it's going to and at, it's going to pause at every 10 seconds, which is fine. Right now, I just want to test to make sure that my uh, mechanism works properly. So if I click Run, I can see that it rotates and it should pause in 10 seconds. Right about now-ish. I can click Run again. And again, after 10 seconds, it's going to pause. And once more, so I can see that the linkage works properly. It's a Grashof linkage now. It, the crank makes the full 360 degree rotation and all of that. So I'm going to reset the model. And what I want to do now is to extract the results, the motion, the velocity, and the acceleration of the crank, the coupler, and the slider. So if I click on the crank and come to measure, I see that I have position, I have velocity and acceleration as uh, three components of a kinematic analysis of a linkage. So let's create uh, or click on position and I, I want to get all the information for the position of the crank. And this creates this linkage or this uh, this little box has a position of crank one it gives me the x and y in the x in the in inches and rotation in degrees if i click on the crank again 
and go to measure, I can go to velocity and I can also get the velocity of uh, this link. And if I click on this and go to measure and I can get the acceleration, all the components of acceleration of this link. I can do the same thing for the crank or, or actually for the coupler. So I click on the coupler, go to measure, position, and get the position of the uh, the coupler, uh, then click in it um, again. Actually, one thing I want to do, I want to delete all of these because I forgot to do something else. And that is, I want to get my velocities and accelerations and also positions in terms of uh, radians because then when I go to Excel or whatever, I can easily use that to do my measurements. So go to world view change the numbers and units more choices more choices and change the rotation from degrees to radians now let's go back to click on the crank measure and the position and as you can see the position the unit for the position in rotation is changed from degrees to radians and for the x and y is given in inches let's click on the crank again and go to velocity and i have the velocities now it gives the velocity in radians per second click on the crank again go to measure and this time acceleration and you're gonna radians per second squared. Now click on the coupler, measure. I want to get the position as well, so all of that position. I'm gonna put it right there. Click on the coupler, go to measure, in this case velocity. I have the velocity of the coupler and get the acceleration. Now I want to get the position, velocity, and acceleration of the slider. Click on the slider, measure, position, all. I can get that as well. Click on the slider again, go to measure, velocity, all of that. Again here. And again, click on the slider, go to measure, acceleration, and get the stuff with the acceleration of the slider. So a couple of things we know is that the uh, y component of the position of the slider is not going to change. It's always going to be the distance that we gave to this. And the rotational position is always going to be zero because the slider is going to move in the horizontal direction. That means it, the angular velocity, the angular acceleration of the slider is always going to be zero or very small number. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that these x's and y's, the vx, vy of all of these uh, windows refer to the position, velocity, and acceleration of the centers of masses of all of these components or linkages that I created here. So if these are uniform bars, the center of mass of the crank is at the center of this one, the center of mass of the coupler is at the center of this green bar, and the center of mass of this orange um, or the slider is at the center of the slider. If there are uniform bars, in this case they are, because we did not change anything, and the, diamond, and the geometries are pretty regular. So let's save this one, and I want to rerun my simulation, and when I click Run, you will see that the numbers in these uh, nine windows will change accordingly. So I click that, see all the numbers are changing. This one is not changing at all. Uh, the v is not changing i mean actually the uh, the angular velocity and the angular accelerations are pretty much very small the simulation paused i can click again let it run a little bit when it pauses i'm gonna click run again and now it uh, it does another simulation or another round now it has done more than a uh, re revolution of rotation which is good which is something that I want so if I right click on one of these 
nine windows that gives gives me the kinematic analysis of my linkage I probably have to reset first uh, and I go to edit and I can do copy and then I can change take this to Excel and if I do control V see every, a lot of information has been saved in Excel so here uh, I can these first two lines are the information. It's a crank slider linkage, which I created at, at this time and date. Now I have the position of crank one. It gives me the time, the first column, X and Y of the center of mass and the rotational uh, motion of the crank or the center of mass of the crank in radians. Then in column E, I have time. And then I have the X and Y component of, components of the velocity of the center of mass of the crank, the magnitude of the velocity, which we can calculate ourselves as well from these two components, and the angular velocity. Then we have the acceleration of the crank, time, X and Y components, magnitude of acceleration, and the angular acceleration. And this goes on and on for all of these uh, three linkages that move in my four bar linkage. As you know, the ground is the first linkage and it doesn't move at all, so it doesn't have any positions or velocity calculations. So um, these are all given, and we can use this in, say, MATLAB or even in Excel to do further analysis, which I'm going to do in a different video. In another video, I'm going to show you how you can do these post processes using that. For now, I'm going to save this on in the same folder that I saved the information as a CSV for now. Well, I'm going to keep it as Excel workbook and call it crank slider linkage. And I'm going to save it like that. Let's save this one. We have reset that. Now I want to show you how you can export that as a video file that maybe you can put in your slides or for presentations or something. If we come to File, you can export something. Let's go to uh, Libraries, if I can find my documents, the same folder, Crank Slider, change it to AVI, and say Export, and wait for a working model to redo everything that we had done and save this file in that uh, folder. This is going to take a while. Right now, working model is recalculating everything. Uh, and and uh, as you can see, even the, the boxes here are redoing the calculations as the simulation is running. So we can wait a little bit, and we can also see the uh, the status of the process of saving this as a video and we just have to wait right now for working model to complete its rendering its calculations and and then it will be saved right here see there's a uh, a, a work a, a work uh, a placeholder for this video file but it has not been completed yet and the other files that we had saved, the crank slider as the working model file, and then the crank slider uh, Excel file are also saved right there. So I'm gonna wait for working model to finish the uh, the processing of the video of exporting this as a video file, and then we'll continue. So it's about, I guess. 80% done. It's a pretty slow process. All the, uh, all the uh, renderings and calculations of uh, this linkage. It should be about done right now. Okay. So it's done. Let me save this and also reset. If I go to my uh, folder, 
This is the file that's about 9.10 megabytes. If I double click on this, you can see that the video is running. It's one minute long, so I can change it. See that it's doing everything that it has to do. So this was a quick tutorial in using Work and Model 2D and analyzing the kinematic behavior of a four bar crank slider linkage. Uh, another video I'm going, going to make is the same thing for a crank slider uh, or crank rocker linkage. And then I also want to show you in a different video how to use the data that you export to Excel into doing more analysis, making plots and everything else with this file.